Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace to the rest of you. You know who it is, what I'm going to ask you to do and why I'm going to ask you to do it. I'm going to let you know right off the bat, this is a religious message. If you're going to take issue with it, at least hear me out to the end first. What I'm going to say is not with any rancor or malice or hatred, except against the oppressor, because that's part of the faith. Jason Roger Pope was able to do what he did. We all know that. The government was able to do it before. They were able to do it with HIV. They were able to do it with crack. They were able to do it with other drugs preceding that. Um, they were always able to find infiltrators and ways to infiltrate, and these ways were always through some of us. The FBI was able to find people that went into the NOI, into the FOI. Uh, a lot of them wound up being, a lot of them wound up giving intelligence uh, to the NOI about the FOI. A lot of them switched up, I understand that. But the thing I wanted to say is that our, 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 we already know that we are a community of strong people, but the community is weak and it's in a weak position and anybody can plot and plan anything and, and do it and carry it out and nothing, nothing stops them. And what is the reason for that? Jason Roger Pope is just one example, really. He's a poignant example. He's today's example. But why? The reason behind it. I did say twice in recent uh, times that Islam is the solution for the black community, not just African-Americans, but for black people worldwide and for any oppressed people, really, to be honest. But we're in a unique position. The Rohingya people are going through it and it's, it's racial and religious with them. The Palestinians are going through it and it is racial and religious with them, too. Their enemies are doing what they're doing to them for both religious and racial reasons. But I want you to understand this. What they've gone through, they've been going through for about 100 years, little under a century at this point. What we've gone through, we've gone through for 400 years. So we have longer sustained trauma and we've been uh, absorbed in all the wrong ways into the dominant culture where we live in the Americas, not just the U.S. They have made, managed, they, they still have had uh, enough time or they've had, uh, the time has been short enough for them to maintain their cultural distinctions from their oppressors. That's where the difference comes in. But they are losing it. And if this goes on, they will lose it even more. There are things we can learn from them and things they can learn from us, but we don't have much contact between each other at this point. However, for the black community, I want you to understand, don't take my word for what I'm telling you. I'm telling you because it's true. I'm not, it's not true because I'm saying it. I'm telling you this because it's true. I'm already Muslim because I could have told you this years ago. I knew this back in 2002 when I, when I became a Muslim. This is the solution for oppressed people. We don't have to turn the other cheek. By the same token, we do have to fortify our insides. Because they're always going to come with these things. They're always going to do so. Because there were enough of us that were willing to abuse substances, they could come in with reefer first, then heroin, then cocaine, then crack. Because there are enough of us that are willing to fornicate wildly, they can come along and they can promote thought culture. And we'll go along with it. And then they can put AIDS in there. Now, before that, you always had gon syphilis, gonorrhea, all these other things. They wanted something that could not be treated, could not be cured. That's what they were looking for. And it worked. And because uh, they were able to impoverish us enough to where many of us wouldn't want to have kids, they could make abortions free. And what happened? So what I'm saying is this. When I tell you Islam is a solution, I'm not talking spiritual spooky stuff that you can't look at practically and concretely in your hand in front of you or on some table. I'm talking about concretely, tangibly, it is a solution in front of you. You need a very detailed program to come out of an oppression and a trauma like what we are in at this point. Like that which afflicts us right now. These details have already been written down. You need a framework. Now, if the details are not in the fine points, then the details at least have to be in the framework and in the foundation from which you can build something else. That's what this is. That's what the Quran is. That's what the authenticated hadiths of the Prophet, peace be to him, are. Some of you are going to sit up here and you're going to say, yeah, but see, them hadiths, man, I don't know. I said authenticated ones. I didn't say just anything and everything that somebody with an Arabic last name said. I'm talking about authenticated ones. There's a reason why they were scrutinized centuries ago in the first place. Some of you are going to come along and you're going to say, well, you know, man, I, I am Muslim. I follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's a different religion. I follow the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's a different religion, though. 
I follow Noble Drew Ali. That's a different religion. I follow Clarence 13X. That's a different religion. I'm talking about Islam. I'm not talking about Arabism. There's no such religion. The Arab religion was the worship of idols and statues before Islam in the Kaaba of all places. That's the Arab religion. I'm not talking about the white man's religion. That's not even Christianity, really. That's something that they they had in Europe a long time ago, and then they mixed it in with the gospel of Jesus and adulterated and diluted it so that they could have their faith. Because Jesus didn't tell any lies. Peace be to him. We already know this. I'm talking about Islam as it was revealed 1,400 years ago. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that. And someone say, yeah, but see, what, what if Muhammad wasn't a black prophet? Well, most of them were. And he was the one that told us that. He was the one that told us people that Musa, alayhi uh, salam, Moses was black. Peace be to him. That Jesus had an appearance similar to a black man. Peace be to him. Which in, our, in today's terms would mean he was black. He was just light skinned. He was, I mean, the word Adam means black in the Arabic language. <laughs> I mean, come on, y'all. It's in Islam, as it was revealed 1,400 years ago. It is not in a cult called Salafia at this point. And yeah, I'm saying it. You see, Salafia is actually a part of Islam. It's a valid part of Islam. It's, it's necessary. That is true. The issue is that people have turned a valid part of Islam into a cult and then it became something else. That's almost a different religion in and of itself. And no, I'm not going to tell black folks that you have to take that on. You got to take Salafia as a part of Islam. You don't have to necessarily join a cult that is Salafia or cause itself that. I can't tell you to do something like that. Yeah, people, people oftentimes take cults and, and uh, they base them on valid parts of a religion, but they turn, this, it, it becomes something else. They take a valid part, but then they eschew other valid parts. That's where the cults come in a lot of times. Then, of course, before you know it, now a real cult is, is not even what, what many Salafis have joined because a real cult will tell you cut off your family. And Salafis will never tell you to do that. Because that's not a part of it. But what I'm getting at is that, what I'm saying is that even if you become a Orthodox Muslim, Muslim, double Muslim, you don't follow people who tell you to be patient with white supremacy. That's what I'm getting at. That's all I'm saying. And Bilal Abdullah illustrated that perfectly. Look up Bilal Abdullah Sajid Lipham. Sajid Lipham's name is spelled S double A J I D space L I P H A M. He deconstructs Sajid Lipham's challenge to black Muslims challenge of white supremacy. So Muslims who are black, and I mean Muslim Muslims, like Hakeem Muhammad of the Black Dawah Network. If you wanted some references, here you go. Black Dawah Network, Hakeem Muhammad, his crew. They're talking about Islam as it is, how it is not an Arab religion. It is not a religion of the slave master. They're pointing this out. Now, I don't want to sit up here and, and take too long, but let me just go ahead and put it like this. These are the sources by which you can check what I'm saying. And some of you still are going to doubt it because you, you know, a lot of you got your own you got your own beliefs. But I told you, don't take my word for it. Look into it. Take years if you need to. But more importantly, understand this. If we were a community of practicing Muslims. Could Jason Roger Pope have gone through and did could he have done what he did? Could he have infected 600 plus with the HIV virus? He's 42 years old now. He was 36 when he confessed on social media that his body count was 693 plus and they were all black women. OK, that was six years ago, 693 plus. It's 600 plus HIV cases for which he was responsible, according to the charges. But if look, take Palestine, they ain't all practicing. 15 percent of them ain't even Muslim. They're Christian. And all the rest of them ain't necessarily practicing, uh, practicing Muslims, practicing Islam as it was revealed. But if he went over there to Palestine, no matter how much his money was worth over there, do you think that he could run through Palestinian women and give 600 of them of any age, old or young, give 600 of them HIV? If they didn't know he had HIV, he wouldn't be able to give it to three of them. He couldn't do it. The only way he could do it is if, number one, he didn't know he had it. Two, he was a Muslim and, you know, became Muslim. Three, he got married and then passed it to them and he never knew he had it in the first place. That's the only way that could happen. He, can't, he couldn't go into the Rohingya refugee camps where they're desperate and do something like this. The second time that somebody went and reported him 
for making him sick, that would have been over for him. It would have been he would have been done with. He wouldn't be walking around. Now, that's in the Rohingya camp. Now, these are not all practicing Muslims. They're not always serious. If we were a community of Muslims who were serious, I didn't say perfect, but just if we were a community of Muslims who at least didn't take the religion as a joke, do you think he would have been able to do this to us? You know the answer. So don't take my word for it. Look into it for yourself. Then you will realize that if we were a community of serious Muslims, the government would not have been able to come in with crack because we would have said we don't abuse substances like that. They wouldn't have been able to come in with cigarettes, let alone crack. They wouldn't have been able to promote thought culture. They would not have been able to put HIV into the communities that easily. They wouldn't have been able to do it at all if we were serious in practicing. And this is why it is that I tell people I'm off about passports and system and everything else. But this is why I tell brothers even don't travel just a trick. That's why I tell brother, you may do it, but I'm telling you I'm recommending marriage. I do not recommend abstinence. I don't recommend celibacy, but I don't recommend fornication either. I recommend marriage. Now, when you and I, I, you know polygamy, that's fine. If you can treat them all fairly, that's fine. But I recommend marriage. Then within the marriage, yes, I recommend all kinds of sex. Everything but that backdoor stuff. Pick whatever surface in the house will hold up your combined weight and go at it. That's fine. Don't make a tape. Don't tell me about it. I don't need to know the details. But you see what I'm getting at? Because there's a balance to that. In our faith, there's a balance to everything. Everything has its rights. Things have their times and places. But if you take my word for it, you'll be upset. You're blindly following. And then somebody else can come along and tell you something else later. If you don't, if you just automatically dismiss what I'm saying, you're going to miss out on an opportunity that is literally out of this world. But if you research what I'm saying, you'll find out. And if, if later on, you may come back to me and you may say to me, hey, Blackheart, this is real, bro. You slipping. You ain't doing enough. You may come back and tell me about something I need to get better at. But what is the solution for us? Jason Roger Pope is merely a symptom. But what is the solution? If you do the research and you don't forget to include Islam in your research, and I don't mean five percenters, I don't mean the NOI, I don't mean more science tipple, not because I hate them per se, not because of some personal bias, but simply because it's, it, they're different religions. If you look up Islam, by the way, not just that, look up the slave revolts of the Americas in the beginning, like the Wolof revolt. Start with that. Start with the Wolof revolt and Islam. Wolof spelled W-O-L-O-F. Many of you know the word Wolof anyway. Start with that and you will find that you will find a real reason that they beat the slaves into Christianity. It wasn't because the ancestors were answering them when they called on them and doing stuff for them. That's not why. It's because when they were calling on God, God made them almost in, uh, invincible, almost. That's the reason why. And you will see that if we were as a community would never be perfect. But if we was just serious about this, weren't playing around and repented of the sins that we did commit, that we couldn't be easily enslaved. And if we were serious about how we're going to pass it on to our kids, we would we would get rid of the trauma within two generations. Our grandkids would not have it. They wouldn't be raised with the same trauma we were raised with by our parents because they were traumatized. But again, don't take my word for it. Do your research, you'll find out. I hope that this has been a benefit. I'm saying this without hatred or rancor. I'm saying this because I genuinely want what is better for you. And what is better for you is freedom. I hope that this message is a benefit to you. Blackheart signing blackout. Assalamu alaikum.